Hello, everyone. Welcome. Before we begin, I just want to go ahead and introduce what this event will be about. The topic is understanding autism. This event will be a grand event this whole week. And it is hosted by the VCCD Diversity, Equality, and Culture Week. The presenters today will not be me, but they'll be students from the Oxnard College. These five leaders will be leading today. They're running the ASL club. My name is Emily Zawal, and I am the academic advisor. I've been here for about seven years. And I wanna let you know that these group of students are just absolutely impressive, phenomenal students. They have decided that they wanted to host this event to really teach and inform Throughout this past month, they have been working tremendous hours planning to get ready for this event today. We really appreciate you taking the time to be open-minded and to learn about deaf and autism. During the presentation, maybe while you're watching and you all of a sudden have a question, Go ahead and feel free to type in the chat box any questions you may have. But please wait until we respond to these questions at the very end of this presentation. Don't hesitate to add any questions throughout the presentation, but we personally won't be responding until the very end. All right? Just a reminder, if you have any questions, this event is hosted by the college and they support this. Now it's really important that these questions and comments are respectful to the host. We are not seeking anything rude or bullying related. We will not be accepting any of that or tolerating it. Any sort of those comments will be removed just to warn you beforehand. And that's all. Now I'm going to give it over to the students. Thank you again for coming. Hi, my name is Monica. And this is my name sign. I am the president of the ASL club. Hello everyone. My name is Seren and I am the vice president of the ASL club. Hello, my name is Sierra and I'm the secretary for the ASL club. Hi, my name is Amelia and I am the treasurer for the club. Greetings. My name is Andrea and I'm the public relations officer for the club. Now, first, we would like to start off by saying thank you so much for coming to our event today. It's absolutely an important event, and we just want to show you 
on this topic of understanding autism. Understanding autism and the effects that it has on community as well as learning about the deaf community. But before that, before we start a presentation, we want to have an important announcement. Next slide, please. Now, we would like to take a moment to recognize indigenous people. Today, we ask you to join us in acknowledging the Chumash community. A land acknowledgement is a formal statement that requires and respects the indigenous people as traditional stewards of this land, the enduring relationships that exist between indigenous people and their traditional lands. Before we completely jump into this presentation, we feel that it's absolutely important to share that we wanna focus on deaf culture, ASL, autism, but also that deaf and hard of, hard of hearing people have high diverse experiment, experiences, views, language use, identity, and may or may not identify as culturally deaf. Now, the difference between a capital D in deaf and a lowercase d in deaf are that capital D deaf people identify as culturally deaf. However, deaf with a lowercase refers to the physical condition of hearing loss. Now, we're going to see if you've heard the term of autism before. Have you heard of that? If not, raise your hand. We're just curious how many haven't heard of it. Answer the poll. Please answer the poll. I have seen so many hands. Wow. Actually, only five of you? Hmm. That's good to know that some people haven't seen that word before. Now, the word autism is defined as discrimination or prejudice against individuals who are deaf or hard of hearing. Now, these two pictures shown on this slide, you may be curious as to why they're here. Now the first picture is the hand saying, covering the words, I can't hear you when you cover your mouth because deaf people can't see facial expression when you have your hand covered. The second picture is I can't hear you if you don't face me because typically the deaf culture always prefer eye contact. Now, the term autism, where does that derive from? You know, if you look in via Google or on books, you find that the term autism was invented by Thomas Humphreys in the year 1975. Humphreys published this and defined autism as the notion that one is superior based on one's abilities to hear or to behave in the manager of one who can hear. Some examples of autism include, number one, setting up a room or lighting. If you don't quite understand what that means, well, typically classrooms are set up in rows of chairs where it's hard to look at each other. Deaf people can't sign in that form. So they prefer in a U shape and lighting that are that is natural to communicate easier. Another example of autism would be not having accessibility to services. 
And if you're considering or wondering what access that means, for example, a lawyer or any place that refuses to provide whatever you need, for example, interpreters to communication, a location that refuses that, that's an example of autism. Number three, the quote, I'll tell you later during spoken conversations. Typically hearing people are in a conversation, you know, they're joking around laughing, but a deaf person may have missed it. So they ask, hey, what it, tell me, what did they say? What, do, what is the conversation about? And hearing people often just push them aside and say, oh, I'll tell you later, it's not important. That is another form of autism. Our fourth example is the perspective of you can't because you're deaf, meaning you can't find a job because people think, oh, you're deaf, you don't have the ability to do that. That is another form of autism. Our fifth example is when a hearing person has no idea that a person is deaf and often comes up to them and wanting to interact with this deaf person and they speak louder, but they're deaf so they can't hear. So that is another form of autism and rudeness. Here's an example of what deaf space looks like. So please enjoy this short little clip.
Now, here are some more examples of autism after watching that video. Number six is that thinking that deaf people or deafness needs to be cured with hearing devices or surgeries. That's absolutely impossible. Number seven is that assuming all deaf people should be able to lip read. But some people prefer just to communicate through ASL, whereas others do lip read. It depends on the person. Now, number eight, is hearing people making decisions for deaf people's health or education without really knowing or asking for their approval. And lastly, is closed captioning not always being descriptive or accurate? Those are all forms of autism. So before deaf people couldn't use ASL and they were forced to lip read or speak. They weren't allowed to use their hands. That is, was a form of autism before. We have another video of five signs of autism that we would like to show for you as well. So you see more examples. Now, we would like to discuss the real life experience of autism here at Oxnard College on February 19th of 2021. We want to talk about this and how often people get confused on social media about the term between ableism and autism. If you've never seen that word before, ableism, or have heard it as some people haven't with autism, we're gonna explain it within the next slide. Now you see both sections of ableism and autism. Now, autism as mentioned is discriminatory against people who are deaf and hard of hearing. Whereas ableism, that is defined as discrimination or prejudice against individuals with disabilities. That's the difference between the two. But also the deaf community do not view themselves as disabled. They view themselves as capable of being able to do anything that they want, achieve their goals, they just can't do it without hearing. That's the only thing. Now this slide has this video that explains the disability word.
Yes. So now, do any of you have any questions in regards to autism? Questions or comments, please feel free to type them in. So what is ASL? I'm going to go ahead and wait for more of you to answer the poll. Please make sure to make your best guess. So correct, the right answer is C and E. ASL, American Sign Language, uses the hands and the face to convey grammar. It doesn't require using the full body like my name does. It is its own unique language, and it is different from other sign languages around the world. It is not just ASL across the globe. And please read this comic strip that shows the difference between English and American Sign Language. Now for the next question. ASL is traditionally handed down from generation to generation through which of the following? Go ahead and reply to the poll. Waiting for those last few responses to come in. We're almost there.
so you are correct, A and C. Some deaf children learn American Sign Language from their deaf parents. However, most, most deaf children are born to hearing families who are not exposed to ASL. So for those students, for those children, they learn when they go to a, a residential school for the deaf. There, they can learn about deaf culture with other students and develop their language skills. Usually these students will spend the week at school and then go home on the weekends. ASL uses facial expressions, head movement, and eyes gaze primarily for which of these options. Make sure to respond to the poll. So the correct answer is actually A. They are used for grammatical purposes. Facial expressions, head movement, and eye gaze help show the grammar within American Sign Language. They show if you're asking a question when you raise your eyebrows or they can show if you're asking a yes or no question with a different type of movement. This can affect how a question is answered. Hello, this is Sierra now. While you're watching a person sign, where is it appropriate to focus your vision? Please answer the poll. Many of you were correct. The answer is C, your face. Some of you may think, why should we look at just the face? Because if you only focus on a signer's hands, you will miss the facial expressions. Remember the last question that was made by Amelia? 
and identified how facial expressions and head movement inform and contain grammar for American Sign Language. So if I ask the question, are you deaf, but you're only watching my hands, you miss that it is a question. So maybe you think it's a statement. Oh, you're deaf. And then people can become confused. Wait, no, I'm not deaf. So that's why it is very important to watch a signer's face. You, some of you might wonder, how can I get a deaf person, deaf or hard of hearing person's attention? Please go ahead and answer the poll. So the correct answer is to tap them lightly on the shoulder. You don't need to punch them or anything like that, just a light tap. And you also don't need to yell, they're deaf. A slight wave is also effective, but there's no need to wave your, face, your hand in front of their face. If someone who is deaf or hard of hearing is seated and looking down, you don't need to go in front of them to get their attention. You can wave near their peripheral vision and they will still be able to see you. Here are some pictures that show things that hearing people should or should not do. This experience I have seen many times where students who are learning ASL see a deaf person and they're like, oh, these are the words I know. And the deaf person is typically confused because they're not your teacher. They are happy to sign with you and have a conversation with you, but don't start listing off a list of vocabulary words. Or, oh, I know all my animals, you know, have a conversation. Now, if you're walking along and you see two signers, but you want to go past them, how can you do that effectively? I'll wait for you all to answer the poll.
This question can sometimes be confusing. So when there are two people signing, really, you can just walk on straight through. I have seen some of you have answered that you should just crouch down and kind of go through that way, but it's really not needed. The people who are having a signed conversation are focused on each other. And by you crouching down and going through them, it causes more of a distraction. They will think, oh, why is this person acting kind of weird? You know? Also, if you're just waiting for them to finish their conversation, you know, that will distract them as well. Are you waiting to ask them a question or something else? So the best thing is to ju just walk on straight through. You don't need to go around them. You don't need to crouch down or anything. Just walk on straight through. Which of the following are considered rude by deaf people? Please pick your selection in the poll. Right. B, watching a signed con conversation, and D, using or talking in the presence of a deaf person. During a signed conversation, it's happened several times, many, many times. It's normal to push aside a deaf person ever so gently when passing by because it's not considered rude. But watching a conversation while two people are signing is very rude. Deaf people aren't zoo animals. So they're not something people should be observing freely or staring at. If you decide to speak or converse with them, what well, well, my mind? Don't do that. <laughs> Same as in a hearing conversation, that when they're talking with each other, you don't need to listen in or be nosy. Eavesdropping is rude. It's the same concept with deaf people. Now, D, talking or, or using your voice in the presence of deaf people, that's rude as well. Don't use your voice. Why specifically? Because if you know sign, use it. Communicate freely. Deaf people can't hear you, so signing to them is the best approach, especially if you know how to sign. For example, you're in a classroom and a People are talking, you know, say so they're speaking Spanish in this example. And you're thinking to yourself, I don't know Spanish. But they're speaking it. They're speaking both Spanish and English. So if you can do that, then involve yourself.
Next question. In general, which is the least effective communication strategy between deaf and hearing people? Please select which is your answer. The correct answer is A, speech and lip reading. Speech and lip reading is very difficult. Often deaf people miss and it's not clear what they've missed. The best way would be using ASL, of course. Signing fluently is one of the better approach and now deaf people are willing to help teach, especially if you're a student. Really, that's the best way. The next approach would be either texting or writing on a piece of paper. Those are both efficient motives of communicating. Of course, as mentioned before, signing is the top best way to communicate. And lastly, would be if there's an interpreter in the situation and you don't 100% know sign language, you could use the interpreter to communicate. But oftentimes there aren't interpreters there for those interactions. And with having an interpreter, having that triangle of communication to communicate with a deaf person is often time consuming and it's not direct communication. As I mentioned again, signing is the best approach. Now a few things to discuss about the deaf community. Out of all these options, which is valued the most by the deaf community? Please select all that apply to this question. I noticed you couldn't pick all of them, but it's good to know that some of you have chosen one of the right answers. To this question, A, B, E, and F are all correct. For the deaf community, it's important for them to discuss and control their own life, education, health, everything involved in that. And often people don't know that. They think everyone has the same experience, but that's not true. Really, it's important for deaf people to be able to control that aspect of their lives, as anyone would. The next answer would be B. Being informed is very important. Having create community members and being in, con in contact with them is something they value too. The answer C and how deaf people value restoring one's hearing is not something that they really care about. 
So that one would be a wrong one. Same with D. Again, they don't need that. They can communicate without being able to speak. Now E, to have the sense of a social obligation and duty to the group, it's really important to feel connected with the deaf community members by going to deaf events, by meeting new people, um, all of that. It's really something that they value. Again, F being develop long-term relationships in the deaf community is something they really 100% value. If you go to a deaf event and someone comes up to you and said, oh, who are you? Do you know so-and-so? They wanna know those connections. Because the deaf community is so small, everyone tends to know everybody. So that's where the, those connections come to play in conversations. And the last one to be self-reliant. The deaf community really care as a whole. They're a very collectivist community and they value everyone who are in it. Other than the word deaf with a capital D, what is a culturally appropriate way to identify a deaf person or that what a deaf person would identify that they are? Which of the following would be culturally appropriate? Please select your answer. Actually, none of them are right. The only one is F, none of the above. Most people would say D for deaf and hard of hearing. And I just wanna hold that, hold that comment just for a second. Letter A is really rude. Deaf people aren't dumb and they're not stupid. That's it, they're none of that sort. So those would not be appropriate. Same as B. That is another form of being rude and offensive. C means more of um, the loss of hearing or not, uh, not able to have, but deaf people, again, don't view themselves in that manner. They have more of a deaf gain perspective. And lastly, D, it's semi-accepted, but really that's on the terms of hearing loss with a lowercase d. That just means that they can't hear. And hard of hearing, some people can hear, some people can't. But the word d with a lowercase d for deaf is not culturally related, whereas capital D is culturally related. The lowercase d is more medical aspect. So it's really important to understand that the deaf with a lowercase d and hard of hearing is more medical related and the deaf community don't view themselves in that way. But if somebody identifies as culturally deaf with a capital D, that's the difference. Those are acceptable. There's many different experiences all around that the deaf person has. And it just depends on their decision and how they prefer to identify as themselves. Any questions that you may have? Some of you I see may have already been answered. Let me look here. We could spotlight Monica, perfect, thank you. This is Monica. Do you have any questions, anything related to our presentation so far?
in a classroom, typically what I struggle with is having the interpreter. And when I have to balance my time with looking at the board and the interpreter at the same time, that is something I struggle with during classroom settings. It's always something that's a challenge for me. What's important really is that Monica is, is the only deaf and hard of hearing person here. Out of all of us officers, just to clarify. Serene says, someone is saying that for jobs, So there is a question about your experience with going to an audiologist and Monica responds, yes, I go every year uh, just for a checkup um, because the audiologist asks you, do you want to use or try to use a hearing aid or not? And it is your personal choice if you want to do that or not. Um, growing up and still I go once a year just for a general checkup to make sure everything is okay but I personally decide to go um, without. Serene says, the next question, can a hard of hearing person identify themselves as deaf? Monica responds, yes, many hard of hearing people often identify as deaf because they are part of our community and they can identify as such because of the shared experiences. Emily, Monica, can you see me? Okay, perfect. Emily says, in regards to the question of audiology or an audiologist, the person who asked the question wants to become an audiologist. So what do you think they should know about deaf people? Do you have any feedback, anything that you've experienced in the past that you'd like to share? Monica responds, yes, if the audiologist could learn American Sign Language, that would be amazing because usually they do not and there is not direct communication. So it's hard to sometimes understand them. And sometimes when you go for a hearing test, there is a mirror and sometimes the audiologist is behind you and you can only see them in the mirror but they don't sign. So you can't understand what they're asking of you or what's going on in the test sometimes. Is that it for the questions or do we have any more? Let me take a look here. All right, Serene is going to pop on here and she says, are there any additional books, articles, other resources that you can recommend so that we can read about in order to understand more about the culture and in order to understand the experiences of the deaf community and better support them? Sierra says, that is a great question. Emily has a great list of those uh, books and resources uh, that we can make available to you. Serene says, does anybody have any more questions that we can answer for you?
Serene so says there is a question about what can the college campuses do in order to improve your learning experience and make it more enjoyable for you, Monica. Monica is asking for clarification. Is it for deaf students or hard of hearing students or in general for everyone? Serene says, in perspective, in the perspective of deaf and hard of hearing students in order to make it a more accessible environment. Monica says, um, it is important to make sure that you provide the appropriate services whenever we make an appointment with health services, counseling services, financial aid, or anything like that. Um, and it's important to have people that we can trust and that the people that we're meeting with do not make us feel disheartened or as though we are less. Emily has a question with regards to interpreters. Within the classroom, what is important for teachers to know when working with an interpreter? Monica responds, usually there's already an interpreter there when we arrive to the classroom and they are informed ahead of time. And so it's important for them to know what services they need to provide, such as closed captioning on videos and other um, services that are also on campus. But the most important thing of all is communication and communicating about their services with us. Emily responds. So if the teacher wants to ask you something directly, should they look at the interpreter or should they look at you? Monica says, yes, a lot of people often confuse that. Do we look at the interpreter? Do we look at the deaf person? It's better to look at the deaf person directly because you're having a conversation with them, you know? So it's better to have that direct eye gaze in order to be, um, more conversational. Emily asks, what about visual competition? For example, if I'm sitting in a classroom and I'm looking at the board and I'm putting down all my notes and I'm equally distracted with trying to look at the interpreter and look at the presentation, it becomes a competition between where my perspective of, should I pay attention to the interpreter? Should I pay attention to what's being discussed on the board? And wow, it's absolutely a challenge for me. Emily's asking, so how does the teacher help with that, mitigate that problem? Hmm, that's a good question. I feel like, it's better if the professor slows down during their lectures. It gives, me, it gives me a chance to put down my notes and so I don't miss anything in the class time. Because again, I'm so focused on what the interpreter is saying that information in regards to a test or some other important day, I, I miss that. So again, if the professor slows down, it makes it easier for me to grab that information. Now, Emily says, now, if the professor puts things on the board and takes a moment for pause for you to look at and then go ahead and presents, is that something that should be a good idea? Monica saying, yeah, actually, it's always important to know that we are very visual, that I have to see things, a picture, so I can take a mental picture to put it down. But if a professor just keeps going ahead and talking, it's hard for me to get that extra information it makes it more smooth if they take that, that pause. I'm like saying it's a lot different for a hearing student to be able to listen and write at the same time, right? Whereas deaf people have to look, they can only look at one thing at a time. Yes, that's right, Monica said, that's correct. 
Emily's saying, is there any more questions? So is Monica. I'm curious if there's any more questions, please feel free to type it in the Q&A. Emily's saying, oh, an interesting, interesting way to learn more. Please um, provide me your email address. We'll put it in the chat and I don't mind. I'm happy to help send you some more resources for different things to look into about deaf culture or ASL. I'm more than willing to do that. Monica saying, all right, we'll go on to the next slide now, please. Monica saying, so now this is on the discussion of t-shirts. We're hosting a fundraiser. And all this money will be donated to Greater Los Angeles Agency on Deafness. And this funding, the proceeds will be going to fund back the deaf community. If you're Serene saying, if you're interested and you want to buy it, you can read and click on the link for more information. But we only have two options. The first is that you can pay you can pay to have it shipped to your house, or you can buy it and then pick up from the college. Those are the two options that we have right now. Still, you're either way gonna have to wait until people buy all the shirts first before we make our order. Once the fundraiser is completely finished and after all the purchasing has been closed, that's when we will order the shirts, order the shirts. Monica saying, now we're going to go on to the next slide. Serene is saying, if you're interested and you want to know about uh, ASL and deaf culture, especially learning ASL and communicating, uh, you can check out our Facebook at the ASL Club at Oxnard College. You can also email us at Oxnard College ASL Club at gmail.com. And then our Instagram is ASL underscore OC to check and see what kind of events we'll be hosting. And any of these options are opportunities for you to communicate with us. Thank you, thank you. Monica saying thank you again so much for joining us today. It is absolutely important and so wonderful for us to be able to have these op us officers work so many long hours and be able to educate you all today, especially about deaf culture and everything involved. We're very happy that we could provide this opportunity for you. So again, thank you so much for being here and watching our presentation. Thank you, everybody saying thank you, thank you. Thank you all, have a great night.